Hello, my name is James Waitley. On behalf of the congregations at Parkstone, St Martin's West Moors and Verwood United Reformed Churches, I'm pleased to welcome you to this act of worship. Whoever you are and wherever you're watching this video from, you are most welcome in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. During this service, you may like to join us in the Sacrament of Holy Communion. If you would like to do this, but haven't already prepared bread and wine or an equivalent, maybe you'd like to pause the video in just a moment and go and get some. Today, Joyce and Anne will lead us in our prayers and Helen will read from the Bible. Now in these moments of quietness, we prepare to worship. Our prayer of praise. Let us pray. O Lord God of exile and home, O Christ of challenge and comfort, O Holy Spirit of truth and justice, we worship you with love and affection. There is no place to which we can go that you are not. There is neither noise nor clamour that can drown out the sound of your call. There are no events, past, present or future, which call into question your invitation. We worship you now with confidence born of experience. Lead us again to the place where we can lay everything at your feet, knowing you accept us still. Friend of sinners, encourage us to open our hearts to you and make you welcome. And so receive the fullness of the life you offer. To the glory of your name we pray. Amen. Matthew, chapter 10, verses 40 to 42. Rewards. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. May God be present as we think and reflect about that reading from the Bible. I wonder if anybody has ever said to you, oh, you're the spitting image of. People often used to say to me when I was younger, you know, you're the spitting image of your dad. And to be truthful, it's one of those comments that make you go, mm -hmm. do you really want to be like your parents? Well, of course, time has caught up now. In one sense, I was like dad. It is scarily like looking in the mirror in the morning and seeing my dad looking out at me. But in another way, I'm not at all like my dad. To be truthful, I don't think he would be any more comfortable or use in a pulpit than I would be as an engineer on the production line. In one way, yes, we were superficially similar, but in another, we were quite different. But in this teaching, Jesus is making, if you like, the reverse of that as the connection. Physically, we may look very different from each other, yet what is holding us together and what Jesus is teaching about is about that sense of his presence and his image being in the image and actions of other people. Jesus is teaching the disciples about being followers of his and calling them, if you like, inviting them to be the ones who bring his presence to other people. If you like, he's inviting them to reflect the image of the Father in the way that they live, in the faith that they exhibit. With this particular passage from Matthew's Gospel, I suppose if you want to, you could look at this in two directions. First of all, 
This is a teaching to those who are Jesus' followers. This is how it must be if you are to follow me. You must follow me in such a way that you are seen as like me. But then there's another angle to this as well. The last verse, where Jesus talks about the little ones or the children. And some commentators look at this and think that Jesus may have been referring to those who had started their journey of discipleship with him, if you like, who had a lot of a learning to do, apprentices on the way. Either way, Jesus is talking about how much God treasures us, how much God's kingdom puts value on those who the world would perhaps pass by or discard. Maybe as we, as followers of Jesus, hear these words, we may be prompted to remember that we are called to reach out to those who are the little ones, the insignificant ones, in worldly terms, because God finds them profoundly significant. And we may be reminded that even when we feel that we are struggling in our faith, our discipleship feeling uncertain, we also are treasured children of God, called not just to be equivalent to, but to be the spitting image of God's love for us in Jesus. So, next time you look in the mirror and you see yourself looking back at yourself, remember in that image that there is the image of God that in Jesus treasures and loves you. May God's blessing rest with you always. Amen. serve you with body, mind and spirit through loving your creation and our sisters and brothers. 
open our hearts in compassion and receive these our prayers on behalf of the needs of the church and the world. We pray for the people we love and care for. We pray for the leaders and decision makers of the world. We pray for those affected by the incidents and issues of the world today. We pray for those whom no one else will pray for today. We pray for the churches we are part of and the worldwide church of Jesus Christ. We pray for ourselves, for our faith and witness to Jesus Christ. Lord God, the Holy One, hear our prayers and make us faithful stewards of the fragile bounty of this earth so that we may be entrusted with the riches of heaven. In the Saviour's name, we bring these prayers. Amen. We now come to celebrate the act of communion. We come with bread and wine to remember Jesus, to be nourished by the gifts that he brings and to be empowered to serve him. The invitation to share communion is to all who love and honour Jesus as their Saviour and Lord. Wherever people met together, Jesus was glad to be welcomed and fed. Today, we are the guests of Jesus. He welcomes us, whoever we are, and he will feed us at his table. So now we come to pray God's blessing as we come to break bread and to share wine, remembering Jesus. In this prayer, please repeat the line after me. Let us pray. Loving God, we lift our hearts to you. Loving God, we lift our hearts to you. Living God, we remember Jesus, the bread of life. Living God, we remember Jesus, the bread of life. Life-giving God, bless this bread and wine. Life-giving God, bless this bread and wine. Amen. And so now, remembering Jesus with thanksgiving, we break bread. And taking bread with thanksgiving, we remember our Saviour. Remembering Jesus with thanksgiving, we take this cup of blessing. And taking this cup, we remember Jesus' new covenant love for us. Let us pray. Loving God, you have fed us generously at the table. We have remembered and rejoiced that Jesus is with us today, and we are ready now to follow him, to be your people for the world. May your Holy Spirit show us the way, make us holy and fill us with love. And now may God bless us as this service concludes. For we remember that Jesus said, Go to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and what mercy he has shown you. So now may the blessing of God be upon you, the one who loves you, the Christ who calls you, the Spirit who makes you holy, this day and always. Amen. Love divine, all love's excelling, joy of heaven 
to earth come down fixing us 